So I'm continuing on with the electron configurations basics, I guess part two, and we're going to be looking uh, specifically at the configurations, ground state versus excited state. Now again, I'm using Bohr diagrams with the idea that we have mass, the entire mass of the atom first found by Ernest Rutherford's gold foil experiment to be uh, the have the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus, the entire mass is in there, and we're using the Bohr a model to draw these circular orbits of how electrons move in an atom. Now, of course, I know that the Bohr model is limited really to hydrogen, but we're going to use that representationally to study electron configurations at this chemistry regions curriculum level. Now, so what we know is electrons that exist, okay, closer to the nucleus, we've been calling them very stable. This is a very stable, low energy orbit. And the reason why these electrons are being, uh, are said to have low energy is because, well, they're being controlled by the nucleus. They're attracted. And we said electrons that can exist farther away do so because they have the energy or higher energy to overcome that attractive force. So I have talked about this, and this is important you understand. So we know this to have lower energy, closer, and higher energy farther away. Now we know this to be true because when atoms absorb energy, the electrons will use the energy and jump away from the nucleus to absorb energy. And of course, they become what we said excited when they get out to that outer edge or farther away because they have the extra energy. And when they're excited, they don't last very long and they leap back to their what ground state and when they do so they give off the same energy that was absorbed and they usually produce that in the form of light photons or spectra okay the fireworks that you see and all of that is because electrons transitioning back but we've been calling the excited state when electrons move farther away and we've been calling the ground state when electrons start from their inner positions now that's something to hold your hat on a little bit because the ground state represents lower energy position for electrons and the excited state's a higher energy position for electrons. So keeping that in mind, when I ask for a ground state electron configuration, I am looking for uh, the organizational pattern for electrons starting from low energy going to higher energy. Anyone studying um, a higher level uh, class of chemistry, we call it the alpha principle. So we fill electrons from low energy to high energy. Now how does that look? Well, if I have lithium, atomic number three, mass of seven, okay, I use that isotope. How does that translate? Well, we know that there's two electrons in the first shell, first energy shell, so we'd write a two, and then we write a dash in between the numbers is the second. We know that there, if I'm using two to fill the first energy shell, I'd have one left over. So it's two dash one. Now I could use the two n squared rule. The two n squared rule helps me understand how many electrons can exist maximally in each, each shell. So you understand this. When we fill lithium's uh, orbital uh, Bohr diagram, we have to fill, here's the, here's the nucleus with three protons and then uh, in this case four neutrons so this is the nucleus and when I draw the first energy shell I put two electrons in the first energy shell I know that two electrons fill the first but I also can figure that by the two n squared rule now when n equals one and then what n equals one means you're talking about the first shell closest to the nucleus so this is the the, the first shell okay now, so two, so, so that, that's one, one squared times two gives me a maximum of two. Now in the third energy level, do two n squared again, when n equals two, because we filled the second, there's no more room. The maximum number of electrons can fill the first energy level, the first shell, the first period, the first principal energy level, those are all synonyms, is two. So when it's two n squared again, but this n is not one like it was the first time. Now, 
we're going to make that n equal to 2. That's the second shell, okay, or the second circular orbit in the Bohr model. Well, we know 2 squared is 4, right, times 2, and we get 8. 8 electrons can be held maximally in the second energy level. Well, again, we don't have 8, but we have room for 1, so we put it there. So that's what it means. And this would be called a ground state electron configuration because this configuration is going in order of low energy first. As I have spoken previously, the uh, orbit or shell placed for electrons, the principal energy level, n equals 1, anything you want to call it, okay, is lower in energy. So electrons fill the lower energy positions first, and then they fill the higher energy positions. So electrons fill from, inner, from in to out. And again, 2-1 is electron configuration. Now, in my course, you can cheat a little bit and go to the periodic table. So let's do so. Okay, so I'm at lithium, and here's lithium. And you can see that it has three protons, which means a total of three electrons. And look at the configuration they give you. And if you need a legend, they tell you that in the key here, electron configuration. Okay, so for lithium, you have a total of three electrons. The first two electrons out of the three have to be at the lower energy position first. Then the extra one has to go on to the next shell. The next shell. Let's look at something like, um, let's look at something like aluminum. Aluminum's atomic number 13. It's got 13 protons. If it's an atom, it's got 13 electrons. And notice these numbers here. And it's so important you understand. If I'm talking about an atom, we're talking about neutral, neutral compounds, not this plus three. That's what it likes to become. So aluminum is an atom and neutral if it's got 13 protons and 13 electrons. So if you notice, eight plus two plus three is 13. This is the number of electrons for aluminum, and I'm showing you how they're organized. Two fills the first, because we know that two n squared is two. Then eight more fill the second, but now the second is filled, like I just taught you. The second energy level holds eight, two n squared. If the n equals two, then my friend, eight holds the maximum. Then the next three have to go to the third, and that's how it works. Electrons fill the what? They fill the lower energy orbits that are closer to the nucleus first. When you see electron configuration, think about a nucleus being right here, okay? And then this is the first shell for electrons holding two. This would be the what? Second shell. This is the third shell, okay? And electrons go in order. So any ground state configuration has to show that type of filling. Fill the inners, lower energy first, and then you fill the outer. And it kind of makes sense. Okay, the electrons would go to a lower energy position first. Why would you, if I gave you a choice to, for tonight to go win, to, go, to run a marathon or sit on your couch, most people would say I'd go to the lower energy position, sit on the couch. Okay, so back to where we were. So a ground state configuration will always go in order. So let's go over some. So if I was to give you 2-8-7, would you say it's ground state or would you say that is ex excited state? Well, this is, of course, ground state because it fills in order. The first 10 electrons, the first two fill the what? First shell. The next eight fill the second shell. And then you have to have the seven filled. To learn how many electrons fill the third shell, we would do what? Two n squared again. This n would equal three. Three squared is nine. Nine times two is 18. A maximum of 18 electrons exist in the third shell. And to see that, you can go to your periodic table, and you can find 18 somewhere in the third shell. There it is, 2 as 18, 4. Look at germanium. Look at that. It has the first two go in the first shell. The, the next eight go in the second. 18 fills the third. The extra four have to now go to the fourth. This is filling in order. This is ground state. Okay, say goodbye to the periodic table for now. But now let's deal with excited state. Okay, now excited state, let's make some room, is not going from low to high, is not going a filled order. I always say the excited state is showing a hole, okay, a hole of an electron or more. Now, what do you mean by a hole? There should be some electrons. Electron excited state, as we learn, represents when electrons jump from low energy to high, when they jump away. If they're going to jump away, they're going to leave 
a place where electrons could be. For instance, okay, if I was to have the following, let's do sodium. Okay, now sodium is 2 8 1. It's atomic number 11, it has 11 electrons. So it's got two electrons in the innermost, lowest energy position. Here's my nucleus. Then it's got eight in the second, terrible drawing, but you get my drift. One, two, four, five, six, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that fills the second for the 2n squared rule. And my friends, we have one more. It goes on the third. So we have one in the third. So this is ground state. But what if, party people, an electron from the first shell, n equals 1, or the first period, the first principal energy level, jumps and becomes excited when it absorbs energy. If it absorbs energy, it can overcome this positive pulling force of the nucleus. Well, my friends, now you're going to have a what? A place where electron should have been. The electron now has moved out. Oops, too big. Okay, out to this position here. And look what you have now. Instead of 2, 8, dash 1, you have 1 in the first, 8 in the second, and 2 in the third. This is an excited state. And how do I recognize it? Easy. It's a state that is showing me that an electron moved away and left a hole or a place where an electron should be. In order to fill the second energy level, I have to fill my first normally if I'm a ground state low energy atom. If I'm excited and I gained energy, I must be showing places where electrons should be because they jumped. So you see 2-8-7 is ground state. But what if I write 2-7-8? Where is there the missing place where electrons should be? The second place. This should be 2-8-7. But an electron jumped away. I should say over here, jumped away and left that as a hole or a place where electrons can be. You can't put eight electrons in the third energy level normally if you don't fill the second first. But again, excited will show you, excited state configuration will show you configuration that's not following the rules of ground state, which are you go from low energy to high, which really means you have to fill this first. So an excited state breaks the rules. So you're looking for a configuration that's breaking the rules or leaving a hole. So let's, pr let's practice a little bit here. Okay, so let me go over this. If I give you 2-3, is that excited or ground state? Well, that is ground state because in order to fill the, the second energy level with three, you have to fill. It's just two. Now, what about this one? That's excited. That should be what? It should be 2-3, shouldn't it? Electron jumped from the first to the second in this case and left a position open. Okay, how about this one? 2-8-7. Ground state or is it a excited state? Clearly, it's a ground state. It's going in order. Okay? Now, one last little piece of information, and I'm going to move on here, is that when you're looking at ground state or excited state configurations, remember, the electrons, no matter if they're ground state or excited state, will always equal the protons because we're talking about atoms. So what catches a lot of students here is when the question, and let me just clear some room here, question will result, which of the following choices is the excited state configuration of sodium. Well, you know sodium's atomic number 11. Okay? So you're looking for something to go out of order that has 11 electrons. Now, if you choose this one, this could be a choice, 2-8-1. This would not be correct because I'm looking for excited state. This is going in order. This is ground state. Now, if I choose this one, 1-7-1, one you say, oh! That is, must be the answer because it's going out of order, right? But yes, it's excited, but is it an excited state for sodium? Is it? Doesn't the protons have to equal the electrons? 
And don't these numbers between the dashes represent electrons? So 1 plus 7 plus 1, my friends, this equals 9 electrons. These are atoms. So it has to equal 9 protons. Who has 9 protons? Well, we go to the periodic table and find atomic number 9. And that is fluorine. What I just drew for you was the what? Electron what? Craziness or the electron uh, configuration of the excited state of fluorine. Fluorine should be 2-7, but I drew what? 1-72. It's supposed to be 2-7. So what happened is one electron jumped away. So you got to make sure that you pick the right choice. Here would be the correct choice. Electron configuration of that's excited state for sodium. 1-8-2. Going out of order and of course adding up to 11. All right. And so that should be not a big deal. All right. And that's uh, excited state versus ground state lesson.